Okay, it's one o'clock. I'd like to call this meeting to order. The proceedings of this meeting will be recorded and made available on the internet. I'd like to move on to item 1.2 of our agenda, which is roll, roll call. <clears throat> and I'll ask our clerk, Jesse Clark, to please call the roll. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Lambsat, are you present? I am present. Deputy Mayor Armstrong? Present. Councillor Franson? Present. Councillor Braybrook? Present. Councillor Cadigan? Present. For staff, we have Steve Brockbank, Director of Emergency Services. Present. Uh, Evan Grieger, Director of Public Works. Present. Adele Arbor, Planner. Present. Bianca Dragisevic, Deputy Clerk. Present. Sarah Dillamarter, Junior Planner. Present. Amber Novak, Legislative Coordinator, Executive Assistant to the CAO. Present. And Jesse Clark, Director of Corporate Services Clerk is present. Okay, thank you very much, Jesse Clark. We can move on to item 1.3 of our agenda, which is land acknowledgement and moment of reflection. We respectfully acknowledge that Trent Lakes and Peterborough County are located on the Treaty 20 Michisaugi Territory and in the traditional territory of the Michisaugi and Chippewa Nations, collectively known as the Williams Treaty First Nation, which include Alderville, Bozale, Curve Lake, Georgina Island, Hiawatha, Rama, and Scugog Island First Nation. Trent Lakes respectfully acknowledges that the Williams Treaty First Nations are the stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity, and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. We will now take a moment to reflect on these principles and our duties and responsibilities as members of Council. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Franzen, I think you have an announcement to make. Yeah, it's uh, uh, Louise Jackson. Uh, she passed away recently. She was uh, one of the mainstays in the Cavendish DNA Center. Every time I attended a function, she was there helping out. Truly a good, good person. Uh, she was also served on our library board. And uh, I believe she served on the fire department for another person. So it's uh, very sad. It's a kind of volunteer you never, ever, ever replace. She was just a, a good person. Every time I was there, she always had a kind word to say. So thank you very much. I the passing, and I wish the best for the family. Her husband John was a, is a great volunteer at the community center as well. They were both there all the time. So that's sad. Thank you very much for that Peter. Well, she'll be missed by many, her family and friends and our fire department. And uh, I think she volunteered there longer than I've been alive. So it's a testament to her staying power. We will miss Louise. Okay, we can move on to item two of the agenda, which is disclosure of pecuniary interest. If anyone on council has a pecuniary interest on an item on the agenda, please disclose it now or anytime during the meeting prior to discussing anything that you have a pecuniary interest in. In your hands, we can move on to the uh, item three of our agenda, which is the approval of the agenda as circulated. I would need a motion for saying. Deputy Mayor Armstrong, uh, and Councillor Cadigan for a seconder. Any conversation? I'm seeing none. I will call for the vote. Call in favor. That motion has carried. We can move on to item four of the agenda, which is the adoption of minutes. We have two minutes to adopt a regular count regular council meeting and a statutory public meeting on November 21st. See, Councillor Franzen? I move. Do I have a seconder for that motion? I see Councillor Braver for a seconder. Any conversation? I'm seeing none. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Okay, we can move on to committees and board, which is item five of our agenda. We have two committee of adjustments, October the 3rd and November the 7th. I'm prepared to make a motion. I see Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a move. And Councillor Franzen for a seconder. Any conversation about those minutes? I'm seeing none. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. We can move on to item 5.2 of our agenda, which is liaison reports for council boards and committees. Does anyone have anything, any updates? I think Councillor Cadigan, go ahead. 
through your mayor, I attended a Upper Trent Water Management Partnership Council meeting yesterday. And as usual, we discussed the goals and responsibilities of the Trent Severn Waterway, um, how it wasn't built as a flood mitigation system, but they still try to use it as such. Uh, you know, their goal is to maintain a minimum flow for the city of Peterborough. Fisheries, canal draft limits for boating and maintain reservoir. Uh, these don't really mesh with all of our constituents that live on the lake who want to maintain their water levels at a higher state. They don't like to see the levels fluctuate. Part of the reason the, the, this committee was formed. <clears throat> uh, Halliburton has a new bylaw regarding shoreline protection might be worth looking at. Uh, they recommend a 60 meter buffer shoreline, which is twice what ours is currently. And uh, final issue was discussing possibility of a water council to represent our interests more broadly, rather than relying just on the province and federal government to look after it. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Cadigan. Seems like a reasonable idea. Okay, we can move on now to item. Anyone else have any updates? Go ahead, Councillor Graber. Going through you, Mayor. Uh, it was a question to uh, Councillor Cadigan. Um, I know the uh, Mississauga Dam Road, they have a group, uh, Equitable uh, Water Flow. I believe. How does that tie into? Uh, I could have also mentioned it there. Uh, <clears throat> A similar group and the people that sit on this board also sit on the coalition of equitable water and uh, capital C capital E capital W capital F dot C A is their website and if you want lake level monitoring that's current I recommend everybody subscribe to that a lot of good information there thank you and they are trying to recommend a minimum flow of Mississauga River to, you know, to protect species and waters and, and people's water because people do draw water out of Mississauga River for drinking water. So it's a great little group. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, we can move on to item six of our agenda, which is a statutory public meeting pursuant to the Planning Act. I would need a motion to suspend our regular council meeting and go into an open meeting for that purpose. Seeing Councillor Cadigan for a mover. Seeing Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a seconder. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Okay, we are now in an open public meeting and I can get Sarah Dillamarker to do our preamble for Junior Plan. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. This is a public meeting under Section 34 of the Planning Act to consider an amendment to the municipality's Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw B2014-070 as amended. A notice of public meeting for today's application containing the prescribed information was circulated to all landowners within 120 meter radius of the subject lands at least 20 days prior to this meeting and a sign was posted on the subject land in accordance with the Planning Act. The notice was also mailed to all prescribed agencies, public bodies, and persons in accordance with the regulations. Anyone wanting to be notified of any decision from today's public meeting must either inform myself or the clerk and the notice of passing will be mailed to them, setting out the method and manner to which appeals may be made to the Ontario Land Tribunal. Please note that if a person does not send a written comment prior to the passing of the bylaw or make an oral submission at a public meeting, that person may not be entitled to appeal the decision. This is a public meeting under uh, for file number 23-19 to consider a zoning bylaw amendment submitted by agent Richard Howe on behalf of the property owner Laney Investments LTD for the property known municipally as 12 Fire Route 103H. This zoning bylaw amendment is required as a condition of provisional consent to file number B-185-22. The consent application resulted in a lot addition from 12 Fire Route 103H in favor of 2 Fire Route 103G. 
This amendment is required as a condition of consent to prevent the creation of a split zone lot as the separate lands are currently zoned rural special exception 53 and the benefiting lands are zoned shoreline residential private access. The owner is requesting the zoning amendment to rezone the separate parcel of approximately 0.71 hectares or 1.75 acres from the rural special exception 53 zone to the shoreline residential private access zone. Additionally, the applicants benefiting and separate parcel will be subject to a holding provision as part of the zoning bylaw amendment to bar any future development from occurring on the lands until an environmental impact study is submitted to the municipality and any or all recommendations of said study are implemented through a development agreement. This agreement will be registered on title at the applicant's sole expense. The rezoning of the shoreline residential private access holding zone will fulfill a condition of provisional consent. There is a planning report attached to today's agenda in support of the proposed rezoning application. The planning report identifies that the application is generally consistent with the provincial policy statement and growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe. It also meets the intent of the Trent Lakes official plan. The municipality has received comments from Peterborough Public Health stating that they have no objection to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment. No further comments have been received from any of the circulated agencies or neighboring property owners considering the proposal. Further, if any members of the public did not register with the clerk indicating their intent to make an oral submission but would like to do so at this time, please either use a raise a hand feature if you're in the virtual gallery or raise your hand now if you're in the physical gallery so that we are able to promote you in order for you to make an oral submission. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there anyone in the physical gallery that would like to speak for or against this application? Seeing none, is there anyone well, there? Here? Sorry, go ahead. Can you come? Our neighbors, uh, our neighbors adjoining there, and just to, just to clarify, this property is joining onto an existing property just to make it bigger. Is, is that correct? I think Sarah Dylan Martin, our junior planner, can you answer that question, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That is correct. We're not creating a new lot; it's just a bigger lot. Correct. It's a it's a merger. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. Uh, what was your name? Rick Geary. Okay. Thank you very much for your comment, Rick. Anyone on the virtual gallery would like to speak? Seeing no hands. You're seeing no hands. Any comments from council? I see no hands. Any other staff information? No. Seeing none. Okay. We can move on to. Item seven over, oh, I guess, business arising from a statutory public meeting. I don't know, I would need a motion to reconvene a regular council meeting. Councilor Braver for a mover, Councilor Cadigan for a seconder. I will call for the vote. All in favor, <clears throat> that motion is carried. We are now back into our regular meeting. We can go to item seven, which is business arising over a statutory public meeting. 7.1, Sarah Delamarcher, our junior planner, can you please speak to this item? Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. There is a public meeting held for file number 23-19. At this time, staff are recommending that council receives the report from municipal planning staff and approve the bylaw attached to today's agenda. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Is there any other comments from council or anyone prepared to make a motion? Go ahead, Councilor Braybrook. I'll make a motion to receive and that the council approve the zoning bylaw amendment reflecting the recommendations of staff. Okay, we have a motion. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a seconder. Any other conversation? I'm seeing none. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Okay, we can move on now to item eight of our agenda, which is public meeting. And then Del Arbor, would you like to speak to this file? Yes, thank you. And through you, Mayor Lambshead. This public meeting is for two proposed Rogers 90 meter wireless telecommunications guide tower installations as part of EORN's cell gap project. A public meeting is a requirement of the recent council approved policy protocol and guidelines for establishing radio communication facilities within the municipality of Trent Lakes. First site, Rogers site C8576 
is proposed on a property on the west side of County Road 507, north of Rockcroft, in which the antenna tower will be located within a fence compound. Rogers site C8594, known as Kawartha Highlands, is proposed on a property on the east side of County Road 507, opposite South Greens Lake Road. This proposed tower site will include an ancillary equipment structure surrounded by chain link fencing. Both sites are accessed by County Road 507 and staff have circulated the applications to the County Public Works Department. Comments received identify that the setback for non-residential structures from the fronting property line of a county road is 100 feet. The fire chief has also made comments that if required by the fire department, he would like the reserved opportunity to be able to add equipment to the tower. The fire chief also pointed out there's an existing tower site with a building, hydro and driveway at Cedarwood Drive that could be a site for consideration as opposed to having these two proposed <coughs> towers in close proximity of each other. In regards to reserving the opportunity to put equipment uh, for our fire department on the tower, it's my understanding that if a municipality wished to install an antenna on a Rogers Tower, there is a procedure in place which requires an agreement with the municipality along with an annual fee. Rogers, in reference to the existing site that the fire chief referred to, indicate it is not suitable for Rogers' use. Rogers advises both these proposed sites fit the criteria to maximize and improve network coverage for wireless users in the area and as part of the Yorn cell gap project. In accordance to our municipal policy, Rogers has completed the following. They have provided a submission of site selection and justific justification reports for each site. They have advertised the proposed towers in both the Lakefield Herald and the Quartha Promoter on November 3rd. An information package was mailed to every property owner located 270 meters from the outer guy anchors or 340 meters from the tower itself which is a radius of three times the tower height. Municipal staff also posted this information package on our municipal website. The next steps after today's public information meeting, the process will include Rogers providing a summary report to the municipality upon their receipt and review of all the information provided and then a staff report will be provided to council at a subsequent council meeting. Council will then be required to provide a resolution in support or against the proposed Rogers Towers, which will include drafting of a concurrence or non-concurrence letter, which will be forwarded to ICED, which is the approval authority for radio communication facilities. Representatives of Rogers, Christian Lee and Eric Bell Chamber are participating electronically today to provide a summary of any comments received to date and to answer any questions that council may have. Okay, thank you very much Adele Arbor, our planner. Is <clears throat> there, or do we have those people online? We may have some questions. Uh, yes, good afternoon, it's Eric Bell Chamber here. Okay, thank you very much. For, would you like to say something? Uh, certainly, thank you for the opportunity. Um, we have received a couple of comments uh, for the site that's on the screen, uh, C8594. Uh, in fact, just the one comment having to do with uh, aerodromes and aeronautic safety. Um, Transport Canada has made a determination for this particular proposed site that lighting and marking is not required. However, given the uh, concerns expressed by an individual with an unregistered aerodrome on Greens Lake, uh, he's requested daytime lighting and we uh, will investigate uh, the potential of uh, accommodating that request. With the location at C8576, uh, we did have a comment from an adjacent property owner that he wasn't enthused with having a tower nearby. Are there any questions from Council? Okay, thank you very much. Is there any questions from Council for the... Go ahead, Councillor Cadigan. Through you, Mayor, I have a couple questions. Uh, the existing tower 
Do we know who owns it? Is it the county? I know that our fire department uses it for a uh, repeater. I think it's actually task communications. Task communication. Yeah. I think it's a communication company out of Peterborough, but I, uh, um, Chief Brockbank, are you online? Yes, I am, Mayor. Do you know who owns the tower that we have our communications thing at Cedarwood Drive? Yes, for you, Mayor Lamb said it is owned by Netcom. To your question, Councilor Gallagher. Uh, and so the follow up question would be why not use that tower, that site? rather than putting one within a couple hundred meters. So that uh, proposed tower uh, was evaluated and deemed not suitable for our use. Uh, the Eorn Cell Gap project is a $300 million public-private partnership uh, to improve service and ensure that 99% of the population of Eastern Ontario can place phone calls. And uh, that tower is simply not viable for our use and the equipment that we need to place on it. Thank you. Okay. One more, any more questions, Councilor Gannigan? Before we, I think that's it for now. Anyone else have any questions? I see Councilor Braver. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thanks, Eric. Uh, just a quick question: How did this um, How did this project come to fruition? Uh, was it uh, feedback from the community? Uh, was it an identified need uh, in the area? Because I, I know it. Uh, you know, we get benefit from all the uh, cell service and upgrades uh, for our northern part of our uh, municipality. Sure, uh, three of our labs had. Uh, there was a request for proposal put out uh, by EORN, the East Ontario Regional Network, and the East Ontario Mayor's uh, Board Caucus, I believe. Uh, Rogers was awarded the contract uh, a few years ago, and in the uh, few years that have elapsed, we've uh, given them of acquiring roughly 265 new cell tower sites and upgrading another 300 or so cell towers. <laughs> the goal of the project is to ensure that 99% of the population of Eastern Ontario can at least place a phone call uh, and then from there 85% of the population will be able to place uh, a video call with at least a standard definition. <clears throat> so there is definitely a need for this to have one continuous network through the entire region that uh, users can benefit from. Uh, in the event any other carriers wish to co-locate on these facilities, then they can definitely do so. Uh, but for the time being, it's simply uh, a $300 million project with joint funding from uh, Rogers to the tune of $150 million, and then $70 million each from the provincial and federal governments, and $10 million from the municipal government. Does that adequately address your question? Okay, go ahead, Councilor Braver. Yes, it does. Thank you, through you, Mary. Um, uh, do you know if there's going to be any, uh, if this moves forward, uh, any uh, impact on our uh, residents' uh, taxation? Well, when it comes to uh, cell towers, uh, what do you mean, uh, the residents that own the properties the towers are on or in the vicinity? I'm not sure what you're referring to. I think you're asking for a little more detail as to what you would like for that question. Yeah, is there any impact? Is there any uh, financial impact on the uh, municipality? No, none whatsoever. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor, I'm sorry, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Lamson. Uh, Eric, two questions for you. Um, the first one is what is the range of each of uh, those proposed towers in terms of service? Sure, uh, through Mayor Lamson, the effective range varies based on topography, uh, geography, uh, the time of the year in terms of leaves on trees and the population in the surrounding area. Uh, generally, we provide a service improvement to roughly six to eight kilometers in radius. And uh, a follow-up to that before another question. Um, is there opportunity to build a higher tower which would have a wider range? The, the vast, vast, vast majority of the cell towers that uh, are part of the ER and cell gap project are 90 meter tall guide communication towers. They are essentially the best bang for our buck when it comes to providing that uh, fairly significant service area without having to take up uh, an enormous amount of space uh, and also be looming more necessarily than they have to on the horizon. Great, thank you. The uh, second question, uh, it's my understanding that Rogers uh, contracts with other providers for sharing the use of their tower, like Fido, Chatter, Simply Connect. Um, so I wanted to just confirm that that will be available to those 
I also wanted to just confirm that I believe Bell and Rogers do not share cell tower uh, infrastructure. So uh, that raises uh, an interesting handful of points. Uh, firstly, uh, Rogers does support a brand referred to as Fido, um, just as Bell has Chatter. It's essentially a, a somewhat secondary or value brand. Um, when it comes to co-location, we are federally regulated, and uh, I said the regulator indicates that we do have to allow co-location. So in the event Bell wants to improve service in the area for their customers, then there is a co-location department that would speak to Rogers co-location department, and the space would be afforded uh, to a carrier, and it would be on commercial terms that are established, and uh, it's a very streamlined process. And if I may, what would be the process? Let's say the municipality wanted, on behalf of their residents that live up there, wanted Bell to pursue the opportunity to co-locate onto that tower. Uh, what would the process be to uh, make that request to Bell? That would be up to the individual users uh, experiencing uh, less than ideal service, if that were to be the case. Uh, they'd be welcome to communicate directly with their service provider, whether it be uh, Bell or Freedom. And from there, Bell would make the decision as to whether or not uh, it was necessary to co-locate uh, on the tower. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Councilor Braver. Go sorry, ahead. Three, Braver. Just uh, last question, Eric. Uh, if all the approvals are obtained, uh, what uh, is your anticipated completion date for the two towers? Uh, three of our lamps said we would likely start construction in early 2025. Uh, there are still a number of uh, steps to go through in the process once we uh, ideally receive mm -hmm. the occurrence. Uh, we would complete soil testing, uh, an archaeological assessment, and then from there, some site prep and uh, construction. So, as I indicated, it would likely be early 2025, and the cutoff end date for the project is the end of 2025. So we do have uh, some some time pressure that we're facing. Basically. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Any other questions? And seeing none, would you be prepared to make a motion of some kind there? <coughs> do we have the plan? To you, Mayor Lamb said, I believe it is Adele's attention, the intention to bring a report to a later meeting uh, where council will make a decision. This is just for information gathering at this time. Okay. I think we probably get a motion just to receive it for information. Yeah. Or do we need that? Um, and also ask any uh, members of the public. Oh, yeah. Is there anybody in the public that would be for or against this? Would like to speak for this? Either item. Any hands here? Is there any in the gallery, in the virtual gallery? I'm not seeing any hands. We're not seeing any hands. Okay. Thank you very much. Go ahead, Councillor Cadigan. Motion to receive. Do I have a seconder for that motion? The Councillor Franzen for a seconder. Any conversation? No, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Okay. Thank you very much. We can move on to item nine of our agenda, which is presentations. We have none. Delegations, we have none. Item 11 staff reports we item point one is public works we have none item 11.2 which is recreation facilities we have none item 11.3 which is fire and rescue services we have none we can move on to item 11.4 which is building and planning and we have sarah dillon marker our junior planner would you like to speak to this item thank you through you mr mayor on today's agenda there is a municipal appraisal form for consent file b-99-23 Submitted by property owners Pamela Speck uh, Kukabacher and Walter Airy Kukabacher. The subject land is located at 6 Oak Ridge Road. The applicants are proposing to sever lands from 6 Oak Ridge Road in favor of 74 Oak Ridge Road to rectify an encroachment. 74 Oak Ridge Road has a garage that encroaches into the lands owned by 6 Oak Ridge Road. A site plan submitted with the applicant's application form neglected to include setbacks from the garage to the proposed new lot lines. A rezoning application is required as the severed lands are zoned rural and the benefiting lands are zoned rural residential. In addition to being rezoned so as not to create a split zoned lot, 
the applicants will be required to submit a two-scale site plan illustrating the setbacks of the garage to the new lot lines to confirm conformity to the bylaw. If the setbacks are not in conformance with the comprehensive zoning bylaw, the garage's deficient setbacks shall also be recognized in the rezoning application. A merger agreement is required so that the lots are treated as a single parcel. The application conforms to the Trent Lakes official plan as the intent of the consent application is to adjust a lot line boundary <coughs> to correct an encroachment and not create a new lot. The existing residential uses of the subject lands will remain the same. Staff have reviewed the application and recommend that council supports the proposed severance with the following three conditions. One, a rezoning of the severed parcel to the satisfaction of the municipality. The R plan will be required to be submitted for a complete ZBA application. Two, a merger agreement to be entered between the transferor, transferee, and municipality and registered on title at the sole expense of the applicant. And three, the submission of a two-scale site plan illustrating the garage's setbacks to the proposed new lot lines to municipal staff prior to the submission of the zoning bylaw amendment application. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone have any questions or comments? Seeing me. Okay. Prepared to make a motion? I'm seeing Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mayor Lampson. Uh, I make a motion to uh, support the approval of this uh, application. Okay. Do we have a seconder for that motion? The Councillor Cadigan for a seconder. Is there any conversation? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Sarah Murphy. Okay, we can move on to item 11.5, which is finance. We have none. We can move on to 11.6, which is administration. We have none. 11.7, which is corporate services. We have none. We can move on to item 12 over agenda now, which is correspondence for information. We have two items there. We can receive them both at the same time, or we can discuss them one at a time, whichever is council's decision. Go ahead, Councillor Braybrook. Thank you, motion to receive both. I have a motion for both. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Cadigan for a seconder. Is there any comments or questions? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Okay, we can move on to item 13 of our agenda, which is correspondence for information. We can receive them all at one time, or we can just pull one out that we would like to discuss and receive the rest in one motion, whatever we decide. Go ahead, Councillor Franzel. I'd like to support 13.4, okay. dealing with infrastructure. Yes. I'd like to pull that one out, and I'd like to pull uh, the town of Bourneville out uh, for the Ontario Works financial assistance rates. Okay. We can pull those two out. Is there anyone willing to make a motion on the remaining ones? Deputy Mayor Armstrong? Uh, make a motion to receive correspondence 13.1, 13.2, and 13, excuse me, point three. Thank you. Do we have a seconder for that motion? <clears throat> Councillor Franzen for a seconder. Any conversation? Seeing none, we will call for the vote. All in favor? Motion is carried. Okay, we can now move on to 13.4, which is the municipality of Tweed. Councilor Cranston, would you like to speak to that? Through you, Mayor. Uh, I, I, I agree totally with what they're saying. We're in the same position. It's very difficult to pay for all the infrastructure projects that we need to complete uh, from just tax dollars. Property tax dollars basically is all we get. So I think we need help from the provincial and federal government to complete our infrastructure project. Okay, thank you very much. Would someone like to second that motion? I see Councillor Braybrook for a seconder. Any other conversation? I see none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Thank you very much for supporting that, Councillor Franzen. We can move on to item 13.5 of our agenda, which is the town of Orangeville. Would you like yeah. to speak to that item as well? Yeah, uh, with, with the uh, cost of housing and the uh, and the increase in food, I just don't know how anybody can survive on Ontario Works. So I, I'd like to see uh, the recommendations that they've made for Ontario Works. Okay. Do I have a second to refer that motion? 
And seeing none, that motion fails. Okay. Anyone else prepared to make a, a different motion? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Yeah, a, a motion to receive simply because I don't know enough about the uh, this, the issue and or the recommendation. Okay, do I have a seconder for that motion? See Councillor Braybrook for a seconder. Any other conversation? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much. We can move on to item 14 of our agenda, which is bylaws. And we can have Jesse we Clark, our clerk. There is a can you speak to item 14.1? Yes, thank you to you, Mayor Lance Head. There are two uh, bylaws on today's agenda that didn't have a corresponding staff report or public meeting. The first is B2023-101, which is a bylaw to appoint council members to the Committee of Adjustment Property Standards Committee for 2024. And B2023-104 is a bylaw to authorize the execution of a fire communication services agreement between the county and city of Peterborough and the eight lower tier municipalities. Okay, thank you very much, Jesse Clark. We can take all these at one point, but I guess item 14.2, we have to make a decision on so might as well just go through them one at a time. 14.2, appointments to the Committee of Adjustment. I personally would enjoy staying on that committee. It's something that's very near and dear to me, and I enjoy that. I don't know if Councillor Cranzen yeah, would be interested too, but if anyone else would like to, I think we can make adjustments. Go ahead, Councillor Braybrook. Through you, Mayor. Um, I don't know whether uh, my suggestion is the, to maintain status quo if, if uh, the Mayor and Councillor Franz and are willing to stay on. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Deputy Mayor Armstrong? I would second that motion. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> Any other conversation? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Thank you for that appointment. Okay, thank we you. can move on to 14.3 of our agenda, which is the knee investments we discussed earlier in this meeting. Anyone prepared to make a motion? Seeing Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Uh, motion to approve. And Councillor Cadigan for a seconder. Any conversation? I'm seeing none. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Okay. We can move on to 14.4, <clears throat> which is the executive execute the fire communication service agreement. Prepare to make a motion. Seeing Councillor Cadigan for a mover. And for a seconder, we will have Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Any conversation? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Okay. We can move on to item 15 of our agenda, which is business arising out of a previous meeting. Does anyone have any business arising out of a previous meeting that they would like to discuss at this time? Yeah. I'm seeing none. Okay, anyone have an item 16 of our agenda, which is notice of motion. Does anyone have a notice of motion they would like to put in? Seeing none, we move on to item 17, which is information items. Does anyone have any information items? Go ahead, Councillor Franzen. Uh, I just had a thought and uh, it came about uh, with the recent passing of uh, some very important people that were uh, volunteers in the Cavendish area. I think that all of our community centers should have a wall of honor. Maybe the, the previous chairs from those uh, from the halls and just on the wall somewhere to honor the long-term volunteers that uh, that are on those committees. And I, I would be hoping that our liaisons to our various halls would bring that forward to the halls. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think that's a reasonable idea. I don't know if that's a business arising out of a previous meeting, but for information, that I guess that's information. information yeah. Item. Yeah. Okay. Just uh, asking whether the liaison think it's a good idea to, to bring that idea to the halls because there, there's a lot of people serving on on the halls and have served yeah. a long time and they should be recognized. Yeah, I, I do know there's a plaque at the Cavendish Community Centre for uh, Jack Clark, which was a Lifelong volunteer there yeah. as well. So I, I think that's some of that's being done. Go ahead, Councillor Gadigan. Through you, Mayor, we also have the Jackson Pavilion named after Joan and Louise. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, which which means it started. Yeah. I think that's it's a reasonable idea. Maybe contact our liaison and talk contact our hall boards and see if that's something they would like to Yeah, and, and uh, I, I know uh, at our, our curling rink we have one wall of all the former 
presidents from the curling club. Mm -hmm. And people probably look at that more than they do at the trophy uh, displays that we have there. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to recognize people for their long-term service to the municipality or to the hall. <coughs> Thank you very much for bringing that to our attention. I, I must admit, we just had a person that's been in this council chambers for the first time. First thing they did was look at the plaques on the wall about previous reeves and mayors and stuff. So it's yeah. kind of nice to see that that was there and available for people to look at. Okay. Thank you very much, Councillor Franzen. Well, we can move on to item 18 of our. Go ahead, Councillor Braver. Sorry, three of you, Mayor. I just heard information item yes. uh, this past Sunday. Uh, Buckhorn Community Center uh, held their children's Christmas party and uh, it was um, sold out uh, and it was there was about 70, uh, 70 kids that uh, were signed up and, um, and their families and it was, uh, it was a great day. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Councillor Braver. Go ahead, Councillor Cranley. Just one more. Uh, Old Shores uh, does breakfast uh, usually twice a month. The next breakfast is on the 16th of December, there uh, it's eight dollars and it's uh, a great breakfast. Uh, fresh potatoes, eggs, bacon, ham, female bacon. So I think it's good to support uh, the, our communities, even if they're private ones. Thank you very much for bringing that to your attention. I'll take an extra cholesterol pill that day. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Councillor Gaddy. Through you, Mayor. Uh, also on the 16th, after you've had breakfast at Oak Shores, you can go to the Cavendish Community Center for a potluck dinner. Sounds like I don't have to cook. <laughs> go ahead, <laughs> Councillor Braver. Through you, Mayor, to uh, Councillor Cadigan. What time would that be? Normally, it starts around 5.36. Soft opening. Thank you. Okay, excellent. Any other information items? It's nice to share these with our community because hopefully people are watching and watching this on YouTube. Okay. Any other information? I'm seeing none. We can move on to item 18 of our agenda, which is a closed meeting. We have a motion to go into closed. <clears throat> I see Councillor Cadigan for a mover, Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a seconder. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. We are now going into closed item 18.14, Ontario Municipal Act Section 239.2, to discuss the personal matters of an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, municipal employees, or C, a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board, proposed disposition, and D, labor relations or employee negotiations, municipal employees. We are now going into closed. Okay, I'm not going to go to section 18.2 of our agenda, which is rise from closed session. I would like to I would appreciate a motion to rise. Sorry. I see Deputy Mayor Armstrong and Councillor Cadigan for a seconder. I will call for the vote. All in favor? The motion is carried. We are rose from closed and back into our regular council meeting. Okay, we can move on to item 19 of our agenda, which is business arising from the closed meeting, which is the adoption of the minutes. Made a motion for saying. The Councillor Franzen for a mover and Councillor Braver for a seconder. Any conversation? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Okay, we can move on to item 20 of our agenda, which is the adoption of the confirming bylaw 20.1. Contain a motion. I see Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a mover. Councillor Cadigan for a seconder. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. We can move on to item 21 of our agenda, which is a motion to adjourn. Someone would like to make that motion? I see Councillor Cadigan for a mover. <coughs> Councillor Braybrook for a seconder. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone, staff, and everyone who participated online and in the gallery.